So cod makes you fatter than scallops. Let's unpack this. I've been talking a lot about this classic John Speakman paper. They took different groups of mice and they fed them all different levels of protein. They fed them all different levels of sugar and they fed them all different levels of fat. And they concluded that only dietary fat makes you fat. The mice, they got the fattest. We're getting around uh, between, let's say, 40 and 60% of their calories as fat. That was the Goldilocks zone that we tend to call swampland, which is a term I took from Denise Minger. But one of the things about that Speakman paper and one of the things about all of the research that has been, or 95% of the research that has been done in uh, rodent models, mice and rat models, which is where we get a lot of our data about what things can cause obesity, right? What things have the ability to cause obesity um, because humans are hard to do science on. The only source of protein tends to be casein. And this is from that John Speakman paper. These are the diets you can see there. They're steadily increasing the protein uh, from here to here to here, uh, but it's always casein. And casein has a certain amino acid profile. And I've been talking a lot, my last video was about the benefits of collagen and collagen has some specifically beneficial amino acids. The amino acids I mean are glycine and arginine. If you watch the video, The Miracle of Collagen, I talk a little bit about why those things are. In this video, we're gonna add another amino acid called taurine to that list. But sticking with the glycine and arginine theme for the moment, this week I asked uh, X Fat Loss to add the ratio of, uh, you can see here, glycine plus arginine to branch chain amino acids to his foodulator, which you can find over at foods.xfatloss.com. And he did that for me. I was just kind of iterating through a bunch of different protein sources. So I started with beef tenderloin, which is kind of like the most basic, right? And I was looking at, and so branch chain amino acids can be implicated in insulin resistance. And so, and I've been restricting branch chain amino acids and I've been eating a lot of collagen. So I've been trying to get a lot of glycine and arginine. You can see that the ratio of glycine to BCAA is 0.237, which is about a quarter, which means that if you eat beef, you're getting four times as many branch chain amino acids as you're getting of glycine. And if you think about glycine plus arginine, that number is about 0.6. So there's, there's significantly more uh, BCAAs in a beef tenderloin than there are glycine and arginine. And so you can increase this a little bit with cuts that are high in collagen. So this is beef shanks. Uh, beef shanks are about the most collagenous uh, muscle cut that there is. And you can see the glycine goes up to about 0.32. So now there's uh, more like three times as much uh, branch chain amino acids as there is glycine. So that's a that's a better ratio, but it's not hugely better. And, and the glycine moving up increases the glycine and arginine ratio as well. And this is Atlantic cod. And the ratios in Atlantic cod look very similar to the ratios in the beef tenderloin. So there's a reason for that. The main protein in Atlantic cod comes from skeletal muscle, at least the part that you eat. The part that you eat from the cow is, guess what, also skeletal muscle. And you can see uh, this is the... This is the uh, this is the family tree of all uh, metazoa, which are animals. And you can see that fish and mammals are actually very closely related on the, the wide angle view. Mammals are essentially fish that learn to walk and live on land from an evolutionary perspective. Put your land shark jokes in the comments below. Uh, I should say like and subscribe if you like this video. I think it does help me out if you guys you know, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I hope these videos are entertaining and enlightening. On the other hand, there are other things on this tree that are much more distantly related to us uh, that we eat. You probably know what mollusks are. That's uh, clams, oysters, and mussels, and scallops. Arthropods are sea bugs. That's shrimp and lobster and crab and crayfish. Nadarians, interestingly, are uh, jellyfish. In the Chinese culture, they serve a lot of cold jellyfish salads. So an interesting thing about jellyfish, collagen is the major protein in edible jellyfishes. They are high in glycine and arginine. Jellyfish were the first animals that we know of that could move under their own power. You know, jellyfish kind of swim. The first real structural protein in animals was collagen. Collagen is the most ancestral protein. And so it makes sense that our metabolisms run really well on collagen. And it also makes sense that if we look further away from us in the family tree, things might be higher in collagen. And you can see, uh, so this is shrimp. So shrimp have even a little bit more glycine than that shank meat in beef. Shrimp are actually pretty glycine rich, pretty collagen rich, and they have a ton of arginine. And so now when you get up to shrimp, you're looking at the glycine plus arginine 
is essentially equivalent to the same amount of branched chain amino acids if you're eating a shrimp. The same thing is true in crabs. And they have even a little bit more glycine. I don't know if you've ever seen scallops swim. They're really weird. I caught scallops in Baja at Magdalena Bay. They have those big muscles that hold them together. And that muscle is kind of like, it is a muscle, but it's also like a connective tissue. It's like the, the tendon or something that holds the two halves of the shell together. And I thought, I wonder if that thing is high in collagen. So I plunked scallops in. Scallops have almost as much glycine just on its own as there are branched chain amino acids. Scallops are the best source I could find that combined glycine and arginine into what we would call a, a meat, right? A muscle, like a traditional meat food. <laughs> I guess is how I would say that. I don't know. And so I went to Google Scholar and I thought no one has done this experiment for sure. And I punched in scallop protein diet induced obesity, expecting of course to find nothing and Someone actually did the experiment. This is back in 2014. So this is a low fat control group. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, this experiment would have been better if this had been a high fat control group, but these mice are given casein and you can see they're given a relatively small amount of fat. Uh, crude protein is about 16.7%. Uh, this is uh, in grams per kilogram. And so the other ones have about 20% crude protein and they have about 40% fat by weight. So that's going to be uh, put us in the uh, 60 percent calories as fat i believe they used uh, chicken breast protein they used codfish protein they used crab protein and they used scallop protein so blue are the branched chain amino acids and you can see this low fat diet this is the one with the casein uh, the branched chain amino acids are very high in the casein and this is uh, despite the fact that the casein diet has a little less total protein in it it still has the most valine and it has essentially the most leucine, even though there's a little pr less protein overall. So uh, the casein is really high in branched chain amino acids. Casein is also really low in arginine and glycine and it has zero taurine. And so this is the protein that we've designed all of our studies about obesity based on. And you can see as you go from casein to chicken, to cod, to crab, to shrimp, arginine goes up, glycine goes way up. It's up to 20% in the scallops. Uh, taurine goes way up. It's 13% in the scallop. And the branched chain amino acids in the scallop are way down. The valine is 40% lower in the scallop. Uh, the scallop has the lowest levels of leucine and isoleucine. I already teased the result on that opening slide, but codfish protein is essentially, if you look back on that, you can go back and pause it. The codfish protein is identical to the chicken protein composition because they're both skeletal muscles, right? They both evolve later. They're, they're exactly the same more or less. So the mice fed chicken or cod on the high fat diet became fat compared to the low fat control, which are the dark circles. Now look at the crabs, the mice eating the crab based diet didn't get fat compared to controls at all, despite the fact that they were on the high fat fattening diet. And so we can say that, remember that first paper where they concluded only fat makes you fat. Well, the fat only makes you fat in the context of certain proteins. Fat does not make you fat in the context of crab protein. And the mice eating the scallop protein were absolutely shredded, right? Uh, that, that protein combination, they are by far the leanest. And it's not close just because they have so much glycine and arginine and taurine, right? This experiment needs to be repeated. I scoured the literature looking for similar experiments and there's not many. There's some where they like try it with high protein diets with different protein sources, but they're going up to like 30 or 40% protein in the diet. There's some where they do pear feeding where they're like carefully controlling the number of calories that all the animals eat. There's an interesting one in shrimp that has a weird control group in it. But this study to me is very illuminating of what we've been talking about. The fact that the amino acids that you're getting matter, they really matter. I sort of was looking around for other things that fall into this category. And I was thinking about razor clams. Razor clams are the, the long ones and they have those big digging feet. They're mostly that like weird foot organ <laughs> clams have. And razor clams, again, uh, glycine plus arginine is 1.17 compared to branched chain amino acids. So they're up there with scallops. What do we want to get our protein sources from? Uh, bone broth, collagen, pork rinds, beef tendon. That's the things I've been saying. I'm going to add, go ahead and just add scallops, razor clams, and jellyfish to the list because I know you're all dying to run out and get a cold jellyfish salad. And then kind of on level one, 
Uh, I'm going to add shrimp, crabs, lobsters, and crawdads. I should probably have oysters and mussels on there. Regular clams on that list didn't actually look that great. I don't know. That might just be a data error. You'd, you'd think clams should belong on this list. And then the kind of level two would be really collagenous meats, things like shanks and brisket that have more connective tissue and ribs. You know, these are going to have a lot more BCAAs. You probably noticed I have these crawfish in the background. I, I like crawfish. I also wanted to point out that crawfish are grown extensively in the U.S. There are issues with eating a lot of seafood. I'm not trying to create a run on scallops. I don't want everyone to go out and buy up all the scallops in the world and then there's no more scallops. Crawfish are an environmentally friendly land use. Uh, they provide economic benefits to rural economies. The crawfish ponds are, it says, favorable wetland habitat to many species of waterfowl, wading birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fur bearers, which means um, muskrats. And, and the water leaving the ponds is of equal or better quality than when it was pumped in. And so I just want to conclude this. Uh, only fat makes you fat, but that's if and only if the ratio of glycine, taurine, and arginine to branched chain amino acids is too low. If you're getting enough of that glycine and taurine and arginine, it may be the case that fat won't make you fat. Till next time.